Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's Model Railways live stream. And today we're looking at some of the guides to get started and seeing what products are available for modelers who wish to choose the Edwardian era of the UK's railway system. So we'll be covering the years roughly from around 1901 to roughly the start of World War I in 1914. It is an area that's for a long time been quite neglected by various different manufacturers, but certainly within the last 10 or so years, we've seen an explosion of different models come available, whether it's rolling stock, locomotives, detailing parts, and more besides. So I thought it was about time to show you, the viewer, that there really is some great opportunities here if you are looking for some classic locomotives, some historic rolling stock, and some great ways to enhance your layout too. Everything that I'm showing you here today is available right now from our website, and I've got a link in the description there for you if you want to take a look at any of the closer details. But I've got to admit, it is a bit of a favourite period of mine of the railways themselves in the UK. It combines the class of the Victorian railway system with some of its specialist locomotive designs, as we see here on the screen. We still have the uniforms there in pretty much full condition, shall we say, with the great coats and the huge jackets, the various hats worn by the different levels of staff there too. But at the same time, it was an era of great modernization across the UK's railways. We start to see some very early electrification schemes coming in, especially on the newly built first lines of the London Underground Network, the Deep Tube Network, as it was known at the time. We start to see a lot of development when it comes into locomotives and designs that have been familiar right through to the 1940s and 1950s really start to show on the railway network with locomotives here, such as the Great Western's Large Prairie, introduced from around 1906 onwards and kept broadly to this particular design. Great mention there from Thomas as well is Lodestar too, which was one of the first 460 locomotives showing the development of the express passenger locomotive through this period too. So it's a great opportunity to combine some of the more classic Victorian locomotive designs with some of the most modern locomotives available of the day. And as we mentioned, there are quite a few of these available now in double O gauge. Some have been available for some time. Some are making their new appearances within the range. And we can take a look at some of those more closely. We'll start off with that star design that Thomas mentioned there. This is one of the first 460 locomotives, very familiar to what we'll have seen coming in the future there, such as the Halls, Castle and Kings. But this is one of the first places it started. And certainly for the mid 1900s, this is a very modern looking locomotive. So you can see here the development of these four cylinder designs coming into traffic during this period and being completely different than anything that had gone before. These really were the peak of design and research at the time and shows that you still can have a larger locomotive in service in this period too. We just saw Hornby's model on the screen there, which has been produced for around 10 years or so now and can be picked up in some of the original colour schemes, although they are a little harder to come by and it's certainly something we may see reintroduced from Hornby in their future ranges. Although we still see a lot of smaller tank engines and smaller freight locomotives too, we are seeing more modern designs coming onto the network with locomotives such as the Southeastern Chatham Railways H-Class, as seen here portrayed on Hornby's recent model, and indeed the Hatton's original P-Class locomotive, which was brought into traffic from 1909. So whilst they are still quite traditional looking, there's a lot of modern features being included on these locomotives during the Edwardian era, and they are now starting to get more specialist too, with them set for certain types of work or duties and the locomotives being designed for this. The Southeastern Chatham Railways Edwardian era rolling stock is one of the main areas that's growing within 
the model railway industry at the moment. There's a huge amount of locomotives out there available. You can pick again from the Hornby H-Class 044 tank locomotives. We still have some of the P-Classes available in the original colour schemes at bargain prices at the moment. If you're wanting to recreate those first years of the 20th century, other locomotives out there include the forthcoming Dapol Wainwright D-Class and, of course, Backman's C-Class 0602. So some great opportunities there if you are looking at this particular company. But we are looking at around 40 or 50 different companies, although there were around 15 or so major UK railway companies. There was a lot of smaller private operators, too, who each had their own locomotives, rolling stock, liveries, designs, etc., etc. So we are starting to see some of those covered now, but there's a huge amount of breadth and detail out there to look at. Heading back over to the Great Western for a moment, we'll look again at the single wheeler that we see here. This is the 442 Dean single that we can see. A part of Hornby's range since the 1960s, it's currently available as part of the railroad range. Although this locomotive really stems back to the Victorian days, they were in operation right through until the First World War. And this particular colour scheme that we see here is appropriate for the Edwardian era. So that is something to have a good look at again there. If you're looking for a medium sized locomotive at a great price, we do have those available if you want to head over to the link in the description. We are starting to see more and more models coming through, not only for the Great Western and the South Eastern Chatham, but locomotives such as the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway Terrier are now available on super detail models in the original Edwardian style conditions there too. Other locomotives coming through that we can expect in 2021 and 2022 are further designs of these and also some available from other suppliers, such as one of the first LNWR locomotives that has been modelled. We've seen the coal tank from Backman, the 062 tank locomotive, which we do occasionally have stock from on our pre-owned listings. These are ideal for operating in that Edwardian period. But if you want an express locomotive from the same period, you can, of course, take a closer look at the Backman and Locomotion Models version of Hardwick here. This is one of the improved precedent locomotives that is available for pre-order from them and is a perfect match for our Genesis coaches that you see here, which are being produced in LNWR livery of the Edwardian era, as they are for many of the other railway companies too. You can find out more information on these on our website. You can see the first engineering prototype there. And these are being made available in many of the different pre-grouping railway company liveries, such as the Southeastern Chatham Railway livery, as we see here. If you're looking for specific dates on when these liveries operated, all the information is contained on those on our website. And these give some great opportunities to expand into the realm of railway modelling in this era. Whilst we're looking at rolling stock, it does pay to look at the wagons that are available too. And whilst a lot of the pre-grouping company-specific vehicles are mainly post-World War I, including Hornby's LSWR brake van, some of the vehicles as the plank wagons we see here are entirely appropriate and the earlier designs perfect for our Edwardian era. You can buy kits of the brake vans, which are appropriate for pre-World War I from the range of Parkside models, which we do stock too. But in the meantime, if you want to start getting your trains ready, you can pick up some of the earlier plank wagons from the likes of Hornby or from the likes of Oxford Rail too. These operated in tens or hundreds and thousands across the country, transporting a huge amount of different products, mainly coal, but also other items such as coke, iron ore, et cetera, et cetera. Do head over to our channel to see a video guide covering some more detail on plank wagons such as these and adding loads to them too. But it's not always just about the rolling stock, as much as it is a really fun side of items that we can see. You can still build up the scene of an Edwardian railway with the amount of details that we have available. And this is where it really pays to look at some of the original photographs and postcards from the era, as we can see here. 
just to get a feel and a style of how those railways really do, did look different over 110 years ago. You can see here the prominence of gas lighting, although electric lighting was just starting to creep in at the period. You'll also see there's not a lot of tarmac there either. We're looking at cobblestones or sets, granite sets that we used to. And these can be used from the likes of the wills ranges that are supplied out there too. So have a look at the ranges there from the different suppliers. And again, use some of the original photographs and items that are out there to make sure you're picking the right choices. If we remove a lot of the more modern materials, although you still see a little bit of concrete here and there, we are looking more at stone construction, wooden construction, brick construction there too. And these are available in a wealth of different building kits for stations, scenery, townscapes, etc., etc., from our website right now too. If you're looking at adding a little bit more detail to your scene, you can certainly add other accessories and cameo scenes too. We have a lot of gas lights, as you can see here, appropriate either for stations or for street scenes out there too. We sell static versions of these lights that don't light up, which are a lot cheaper than the variations that we see here. But if you want an illuminated version, you can pick up the illuminated gas lights from the lights of TrainSave, as you see here on the screen at the moment. These are very easy to wire up if you have either a separate transformer, or if you have a low power spare controller, you can wire them into that too. Some of the accessories that are available, we, are, we aren't quite at the age of cars on our roads yet. Some very, very early prototype cars and designs were coming in towards the end of the Edwardian period, but we're still in the main looking at horses, pulling either horse buses, horse and carts, or some of the early electric trams that are available too. Kits for vehicles such as these in the Edwardian era are available to pick up. We can see here the Ancorton Models laser wood kit for a horse-drawn farm cart, which would have also been used in some of the towns. There isn't a huge amount of models of the horse-drawn buses and trams out there, but you can see models of the electric trams come up from time to time in the Corgi range, and we have a good supply of them available in our pre-owned department too. So you can really build the scene there with the trams that run on the same type of track as we have here. And to make a brief mention of track two, you can of course use Pico's bullhead range, which is a fully traditional method of track building seen a lot more often in the Edwardian era than the later flat bottom style. The flat bottom rail style is what's used on Hornby and Pico set track, as well as the Code 100 streamline range. But if you're really wanting to go for the full authenticity, you can use the bullhead range, which is an increasing range from Pico and they are including more and more parts on that as the years go on. To put the final piece into our picture here, we have a lot of the items we can use to decorate and build our stations and the rolling stock and rails to fill them. But most important, as you can see on our image here, are the people themselves. The railways were the main method of transporting people, both short and long distance. We are talking in a period here before any air travel was invented and at the same time, a lot of the long distance road duties were just something that was going to happen in the future. So heading over to some of the figures there. Now, I will be honest, there's not a huge amount of figures available at the moment, but it is a growing range again from the likes of PD Marsh, Model Scene and Backman Scenecraft, who are starting to offer more figures appropriate for the Edwardian era. In the meantime, if you're fancying a little bit of a project, you can pick up the steampunk figures from Bassett Loke models, as we see here. These are available right now for £8.50 a pack. And whilst a couple of them are purely steampunk figures, we can see the, the wizard almost there in the left-hand pack. The majority of the figures are entirely appropriate for either the late Victorian or early Edwardian eras too, wearing fully authentic clothing for this period. They are supplied pre-painted, as you see here, but with a little bit of paint, these would really scrub up to be fantastic figures on your layout too. 
So that really would enhance the scene there. And certainly we are looking forward to seeing more and more Edwardian figures and details added. But with the amount of items that are available out there now, you can really start building one of these scenes up with the gas lights, the cobbles and the granite sets from the likes of Wills and a lot of the items out there too that are available from us right now. So again, I would recommend before setting sail on modeling your Edwardian railway to check out some of the many historical pictures and postcards that are available online or by checking out your local library or indeed reading some of the books that are available on the subject too. And you, like me, will begin to realize just how much is out there already. It is something that a lot of people don't quite know the sheer amount of rolling stock or locomotives that we have. I've not even mentioned the Peckett locomotive here, which was seen on a huge amount of industrial railways across the country from the late Victorian era onwards. So if you have sidings to shunt, you have the perfect locomotive right there on your screen now. But for me, it's the perfect mix of classic locomotive designs dating back over 50 years right into the heart of the Victorian era with the development of the 20th, 20th century railways as we know them and they became for quite some time too. The contrast between some of the classic locomotive designs of the 1880s and 1890s and in some cases even before that really contrasting with locomotives designed and built during the Edwardian era, which have far more in common with some of the final steam locomotive designs built than they do with the locomotives that they were running alongside in the era. It's a great era of contrasts. It's a great era of modernization. You can have little locomotives, classic locomotives, very modern for the time locomotives too. So it really is a great era to get quite creative with the items that we have available. If you'd like to find out any more on the items that I've shown here today, or you'd like to discover even more items from this particular era, do head over to the link in the description there where I've put the majority of items that we do have available right now, or we have available for pre-order coming very soon in the future. If you've got any further questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask them in the chat or put a comment under our video, or finally get in touch with our customer experience team too via email or live chat. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel also for more videos like this, and of course, all the latest model railway news from Hatton's Model Railways too. I hope I've given you some inspiration here. I hope I've shown you some of the various different models that are available. Feel free to get in touch if you would like to learn some more. Otherwise, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.